morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here this morning. And thank you to the promoters of the event and the organizers for inviting me to be here this morning. Um, today I'm going to talk about what would a sustainable urban environment look like in Barbados. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of advice, I'm going to show by example. I'm a sustainability planner, urban planner, town planner, however you want to put, put it, but I'm also known as Miss Green, as she said. My vision, so this is what I'm going to project to you, right? My vision is for a sustainable Barbados with green buildings. Fraser was just talking about green buildings. Run by renewable energy, integrated with green infrastructure implemented throughout our urban environments. The pictures I'm going to show you today, mostly Bajan examples, but I'm also going to show you some international examples. We, have, we already have green roofs in Barbados, green buildings, and green walls, green infrastructure. This is something I mentioned before. I pulled this out because it's a new concept. I want you to understand what it means. Um, green infrastructure is designed to essentially create greener environments in our urban environments, but help to funnel our storm water back down into our ground aquifers and create more greener environments. For instance, we have a, at Naniki, we have an example here in Barbados with a, a bioswale, a green swale, a ecological swale, however you want to look at it, it funnels the water down through um, the natural environment without having to put down concrete and all kinds of things, right? Um, the PSU bioswale there you'll see is an example of um, at my school and university in Oregon, they do this very well. They funnel the water off the streets, it goes into the bioswale, waters the plants and naturally percolates back down into our groundwater aquifer system where we get our drinking water from and naturally filtered. An interconnected system of parks and open spaces with walking and biking paths. Now, the speakers this morning have set a real precedent for us. We've talked about sustainability. We've talked about more sustainable environments, encouraging walking, alternative methods of transportation. You know, when you all walk on the street, you walk in on a bare little piece of sidewalk, right? Sometimes no sidewalk at all, next to cars, next to buses, driving at, you know, God knows how fast they're driving. And, you know, if we had an interconnected system of trails like this, we could actually get from place to place walking and biking without even getting in a car. And that, to me, would be an amazing thing, thing to see in Barbados. Talk about tourism. Green space and community gardens. Green spaces are the wave of the future. Alternative modes of transportation are the wave of the future. I'll talk about this a little bit more and what we're seeing right now and how we can transcend towards this. Community gardens. I tried to start one here. Nobody seems to understand the concept of community garden. We can actually go somewhere and have a plot. If you don't have land at home and grow your own food and learn how to do it organically in this space. Edible landscapes, so important. Everybody planting trees these days that don't have fruit on them, I don't understand. Trees are great. But um, plant some fruit trees, man. We need to eat. You know, you go to the other islands, right? And you see avocados, and you see breadfruit, you see all these trees with fruit dripping off of it, and everybody eating. Nobody's going hungry. In Barbies, we need to learn how, relearn how to do this again. Not to mention planting your own gardens, right? Within it. Sorry, I keep on doing it that way. It's this way. With minimal hardscape and maximum permeable surface area. I talked about this already with the green infrastructure. Now, I know these are relatively new concepts but they're very important for us to integrate these into our urban environments. This helps us to reduce storm water. How many times have you seen a rain shower in Barbados and all of a sudden everything flood out on the south coast and west coast? Well, these are some of the answers to those solutions, right? If you cover everything with concrete and asphalt, what's gonna happen? The water runs off it real quick, taking all the chemicals with it right down into the sea, killing all the coral stone, uh, sorry, the um, coral reefs and all kind of thing. If we have permeable surface area, our water is allowed to naturally percolate back down into the ground. It reduces flooding. Trees can actually reduce flooding by 35% depending on the size of the tree. And it naturally recharges our ground aquifers where we get our water from. Um, it also helps to reduce the urban heat island effect. It as an urban um, green infrastructure and all these things that I'm talking about, right? The urban heat island effect is a concept created by lots of 
hard surface area that is essentially black or gray, concrete surfaces, asphalt, tops of buildings covered in, in, in tar. What's happening is that's re-radiating out into our natural our urban environments, right? And it's causing this concept called the urban heat island effect. Uh, excuse me, effect. It is essentially heating up our environment. So if you go into town, it's hot. If you go into the country, it's cool. Real basic. This is what um, I believe New York City would look like if all the buildings had green roofs on them. The protection of open space, agricultural land, and sensitive ecosystems. This is something very near and dear to my heart. Chantry Lane Wetland, Graham Hall Swamp, we have many sensitive ecosystems of which we have a lot of work to do in preserving. What about agricultural land? Anybody notice development on them recently? Yeah, we need to reduce that because if we want food security for our country, we need to be able to eat our view. I love this concept, so cool. I was, I was uh, actually, I think I was listening to a TEDx talk the other day. And this guy, he was talking about agriculture, and he was talking about you know, sustainable agriculture and growing organic, and then he's like, look, the reality is that if you cannot eat your view, something else is gonna go there in its place. An improved public transportation system with emission standards. How many of us walk down the street and are breathing all that crap every day? Oh my goodness, it's horrible, it's killing me. I know it's killing me, it sucks. This is what our transportation system looks like right now. Cars everywhere, traffic, emissions. That's a picture of what it used to look like back in the day when we had the train line going from Bridgetown to the East Coast. I'm not sure how many of you all know about this, but I would like to see this revived. What could an improved tra transit system look like in Barbados? I don't know. Maybe it could look like this, but I think the public needs to be consulted for us to really figure out what we can do to improve our transit system in this island, because I hate driving. Thriving communities where people care about each other and the environment and ecosystems around them, we are all connected people. This is a message. Understand the, the interconnections <coughs> between them with all these things I was talking about today and our role as stewards of our earth. And my final message to you is, what can you do? Plant fruit trees, walk more, ride your bike. Hey, so it might be a foreign concept, but try it out. Grow your own kitchen garden. And for any of these concepts, anybody interested in learning more, please come and talk to me afterwards. Buy local fruits and vegetables, support your local agricultural economy and your economy in general. Get involved, people. You leave in school, you have no experience. You can, have, you can go to somebody and say, look, I need a job. And they're gonna tell you, you got experience? No. Well, you can't get your job. It's a vicious circle, you know. I learned that the hard way. So how am I supposed to get experience if you don't give me an opportunity? Well, there are many organizations out there you can get involved in. Um, you know, I encourage you to get involved in organizations that would promote initiatives like this, but get involved in any organization with, that are spreading initiatives that you are interested in. When building, build green, talk to me or Fraser, and advocate for these types of initiatives or any initiative that you are interested in through your constituency council and representatives. They are there to help us spread our vision. Thank you very much.